friends. I usually listen. To, I'm usually very uh, impressionable. I follow all the advice my friends give me, and that's usually because my friends give me good advice. Uh, most of the time, it's about talking to girls, and their advice is usually um, to talk to them, to talk, <laughs> uh, to to say words out of the mouth unto the girl. And this one time, I followed my friend's advice to the letter, and it was the summer I got out of high school. We went to the food court. And we went to the food court, and I went up to the Dairy Queen, and I got a blizzard. And as I was standing in line, I was like, the, this girl, the Dairy Queen girl, is like the cutest girl I've ever seen in my entire life. And, like, she did this thing, like, where, like, she she took the blizzard, and she she put it upside down to show me that none of the stuff was going to fall out of it. <laughs> and this was during a period in my life where I just fell in love with anyone who handed me food. <laughs> So she did that, she dipped it upside down, and she smiled at me, and when she smiled at me, I was just filled with this intense feeling of, I, I want to wife you so hard. <laughs> I just want to, boy, I want to wife you right now, and just pop kids out everywhere. Uh, I don't know where the kids are coming from, they're just popping out all over them. Just, I just want to wife you. It was a feeling I had. And I got my blizzard, and I went back to the table, and I told my friends, like, the girl at the Dairy Queen is the cutest girl I've ever seen in my life. And they were like, you should say that to her. And I was like, I can't, I got my blizzard already. It's too, <laughs> it's too late. The moment's passed. So we stayed there, we talked for like an hour, and they kept on seeing me like look back and look over and stare at her and like, go talk to her. I was like, I can't, I don't have, I don't have anything to say. And so like the hour passed, we talked and we left, and I, they're like, last chance, you want to talk to her? I was like, I, I, I can't, I can't talk to her. So we left, we got in the car to leave. As we got in the car, we turned the radio on. The commercial for Dairy Queen came on. It's like, I get it, God. You sent me my wife, and I, and I missed it. I, missed, I, for, I was negligent. So the rest of that summer, every time someone asked me what I wanted to do, if, they, if I wanted to hang out, I'd be like, you want to go to the food court? Do you want to <laughs> get some Dairy Queen? I'm not, this, isn't, this isn't something I'm proud of. It's what I did. <laughs> And we'd go, and every time I'd just, like, look over and look and see if she was... I was stalking. I was stalking the Dairy Queen girl, <laughs> is what happened. And one time, my friend's like, no, you have to talk to her. You have to talk to her. Here's what you do. You go up. You, you ask if they're hiring. Ask for a job application. That gets the conversation started. Once you're talking to her, one, just stick this in there, smoothly in the conversation. By the way, my name is Wills. That way you get her name. Now you know her name. Now you keep talking. You got a conversation going. You've asked for a job application. You've told her your name. You got the conversation going. Then you just ask for a phone number. And bam, you're good to go. Like, all right, all right. Appli okay, t ask for appli application. Tell her my name. Marriage. It's that easy. Okay. <laughs> and I stood in line. And, like, there's five people in front of me getting their blizzards. And they all they all go. And I get up in line. And she's like, can I help you? And I'm just like, I, uh... I actually don't want anything. Oh. Are you guys hiring? No. Oh. <laughs> By the way, my name is Wills. <laughs> and she said nothing. She just looked at me. I had done both of the steps and there was no room to go. But there was a tip jar right in front of her. So I reached in my pocket, pulled out 50 cents, dropped it, and walked away. <laughs> As if to say, like, I just wanted to spend the rest of my life with you, but I'll settle for you being two quarters richer. Please, please think of me the next time you buy gum. Uh, I, I just... It's just one of those, it was like the most uncomfortable, one of the most uncomfortable moments I've had, like, because I always, it made me feel so self-conscious. And like, as I get older, I keep on finding new ways to feel self-conscious about myself. I didn't have to do that when I was little, because other kids did that for me. <laughs> I got, I got bullied as a kid. Other kids did that for me. I got picked on because I have, I have, um, uh, bountiful lips, bountiful <laughs> And they were chapped all of the time. And my lips, my lips are the same size. The same, the size they are now is the same size they they were when I was little. I I grew into my lips. I had to grow. I was it was just imagine these size lips on like a smaller head. And I had to grow. I had to grow into them. And I got bullied all the time for it. Like middle school, uh, the first day of middle school, all these kids at the bus stop gathered around me in a circle and pointed and laugh at me. And what was funny was my face. My face was what was funny. They were all laughing, kids walking up to the circle. What's funny? What's going on? This guy's face. Oh, that is funny. Ah! And like, that was it. 
So like, I never had to like feel, I never had to find ways to feel self-conscious when I was a kid, but I did as I got older. And like one of the newest ways I've discovered that I, that makes me feel self-conscious is that there's a guy at my school who looks just like me, but better. <laughs> <laughs> like he's, like I see, like people have told me about this clone I have. Like I've had a bunch of people like, Will, is this a guy on campus that looks just like you? Except all the people that said that to me were white, so I didn't believe them. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's got dark skin and hair, what? Maybe he wears glasses, I don't, okay, what? And then a black girl was like, Will, there's a guy on campus that looks just like you. I was like, really? Tell me more. So he, so he does exist. And I was like walking on, walking on campus one day, and I looked out, and I just see this guy, like, skateboarding towards me. And I look at him, and I look at his face, and I'm like, this dude looks familiar. Where have I seen him? Where have I seen this guy before? And I'm like, he looks familiar. I'm going to wave. And yeah, I wave, and he waves back because he's talented. He can skateboard and wave at the same time. <laughs> and I, he, just, he just waves at me, and I'm waving back. And I'm like, where have I seen this guy before? He looks so familiar. And then as he passed me, I realized where I seen him. I was like, it was my mirror. I saw, I saw, I saw that guy. I was looking in the mirror. And so now that made me feel self-conscious completely, because this guy looks like me, and he can skateboard, I can't skateboard, so that means that this guy is cooler than me, he looks like me, and he's cooler than me, he's the cooler version of Will's. What if he does the same things that I do too? Like, if he does comedy, I can't compete with that. <laughs> he's just the cool, better looking skateboarding Will's, getting on stage, telling jokes, zipping back and forth across the stage, does a punchline, grinds on something, and I'll, I don't know. <laughs> He's just the skateboard version of me. And then like and then like just when I thought I couldn't feel any worse, I was walking around I was walking down campus and I look and sure enough, he cool clone me is skateboarding and on a skateboard next to him holding hands is Dairy Queen Girl. And they're just, they're just It was the skateboard. I should have told her I ran a skateboard. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. My name is Will Thank you. Will's Maxwell, everybody. Give it one more time for Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks a lot like this guy I know. He's super cool. Um, uh, I wanted to say, again, uh, people in the back that might be standing, we've got four very lovely seats up in the front. Uh, they're very safe seats as well. Uh, yeah, all right. Come on down. Uh, our next comic coming to the stage is a very, very funny lady. Our first lady of the night. No pun intended. Uh, please give it up for the very funny Miss Lydia Manning, everybody. I think what Anthony means is I'm not a hooker. That was the pun there. Yeah, so school just started back up, and I've been feeling really, really stressed out. But Lydia, how hard can fifth grade be? <laughs> There's an imaginary heckler in here. <laughs> Since I imagined you, I should have something clever to say right now. Uh, please be quiet. <laughs> and I'm in college. I handled that, I handled that like a champ. <laughs> that was my first one, that was my first... I didn't know what to do there. <laughs> I'm in college. It's my senior year, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm feeling really stressed. I've got a lot going on. I cannot keep track of it all in my head. So the other day I was trying to make a to-do list. And I'm not really sure how to-do lists are supposed to work. But whenever I try, it just ends up being a huge list of things that I hate. <laughs> Started off with purpose, like study, write paper. Fonts where capital I and lowercase l look exactly the same. <laughs> Spleen, membrane, clot. <laughs> Those are just some words that I don't like. <laughs> right back on track here. Do laundry. Read books. Not you guys, no, no. Um, I mean like, like boring stuff for school, like, like Shakespeare. He's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> hey, hey there, Othello. <laughs> and see you there. Um, nice, nice place you got here. I like the shelves. Uh, I like 
you, you got a you got a nice unisex bathroom <laughs> right there. Yeah, it's it's well signed. It shows me that it it caters to both human shaped and triangular people. <laughs> When I was a little kid, I identified as a boy. It was just a phase. And it was because I thought that's how I was shaped. It's like, the women's bathroom sign really threw me off. I was like, <laughs> I have two legs, two arms, a head, no triangle. <laughs> this bathroom's for me. <laughs> But I'd get corrected, like, no, sweetie, no, over here, over here, girls. And so I was like, this is what girls are supposed to look like. <laughs> Not like this, but like that. So, like, I didn't, I didn't have, like, I wasn't subjected to a lot of, like, mainstream media, like, magazine super skinny models, which I now know is what women are supposed to look like. <laughs> but then I thought it was the triangle. So, my adolescence, it was just full of me trying to look more triangular. <laughs> I'd just, like, eat triangular foods, like pizza. <laughs> and, like, the, the pieces of cheese that you stick in mouse traps in cartoons. <laughs> and instead of saying hi to my friends, I'd say hypotenuse. <laughs> Another pun. Like the one Anthony made. Uh, is that the light or a picture? Oh, okay, sorry. I didn't think I'd be going on that long. Anyway, let's talk about you guys. So, who, who has jobs? Gets paid for stuff. I hate you all. I don't really, please like me. <laughs> I, I really need a source of income. Like, I really don't yet, because my parents give me money. But eventually, I'm going to need money. And my friend has told me recently, um, she's been going and donating plasma. And she's telling me I should go with her and check it out. She described the process to me. So basically, on day one, you fill out a bunch of surveys, a bunch of paperwork. It's like, it took three hours or something. And they ask a bunch of questions like, what drugs have you done? And you just say, not heroin that was used by someone else. No, no needle sharing. All the other drugs, they're fine. <laughs> have you ever had sex with a gay man? I, I don't think he was gay yet. <laughs> I'm mean, like, any time that there are surveys for women, they ask you if you've been raped. And they don't just flat out ask you, like, have you been raped, check yes or no. They're like, they do it sneakily. Like, on a scale from one to ten, how consensual was your last sexual experience? Oh. <laughs> uh, like an eight? <laughs> I don't know. He did seem to be resisting just a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> Thanks you guys for Really amazing, everybody. Very nice job. That was awesome. Oh, man. Is she stoned? That is cool. Uh... Uh, our next comic coming to the stage, he's another, uh, last year outstanding winner, okay? We've got, we've got nothing but winners here, people. <laughs> if you haven't noticed yet, it's a theme. Uh, so please get up for the very funny Mr. Troy Coleman, everybody. Oh my god, how are you guys tonight? So, I just feel like second best after he introduced me as the second winner. <laughs> Great. So, I had the same size lips I have now, when I was a child. <laughs> Damn it, I'm living in his shadow! Uh, try to move on to something original, I tried to eat triangle-shaped foods. No! Damn it! Uh, I love this environment, you guys are just 
You just see ready. This is perfect. I feel like we're gonna like tell some campfire stories. Like oh my god, like there was a man with a hook hand, and he had trouble opening doors. <laughs> like, this is so much fun, guys. I feel like we could have the most epic game of like duck duck goose going on right now, <laughs> and we don't even realize it. That's actually a segue. I had a thought. <laughs> I'm a pro, guys. I won. After Will's. Um, uh, I was thinking about the di the game Duck Duck Goose and how fucked up that game is. Wait with me. Uh, that game apparently comes from true life. If you tap a duck on the head, it does nothing. It's an idiot. <laughs> tap a goose on the head, fuck, it freaks the fuck out. <laughs> Why do we, as humans, know this? <laughs> I imagine it was some guy, some scientist, just real bored. <laughs> just got a fucking grant and ran with it. <laughs> oh my god. Guys, I just feel so close to you. Like, in terms of proximity, you can't be fucking close to me right now. This is so much fun. What's your name? I've met her before, but Hannah, hey, how you doing? Apartment. I came to her apartment, and I, I was drunk. Um, it, no, it's fine, nothing happened, I just talked a lot. Um, so, Hannah, how you doing? Awesome. Awesome. There's no chemistry here. What's your name? <laughs> Carlos. Alright, Carlos, we're going to play a little word association game. Alright? You down for that? Alright, I don't care if you're on. Alright, so I'm gonna say a word and you say the first word that comes to your head. We're gonna go back and forth. Does that sound fun? Alright, alright. Apple. Dark. Penis. Uh, alright, so guys, that reminds me. When you start a sexual relationship, uh, you gotta figure out what to call the genitals up front. Because otherwise, you get into problems. Somebody just says, ah, uh, I want your hard cock. Mm -mm. Too harsh. <laughs> I'm a dick man myself. <laughs> Thank you, you got it. Uh, you have to figure that stuff out up front. I give you guys this advice, but I'm the worst follower of my own advice. I want nothing more than to ruin a night of passion by telling someone to suck my schlong. <laughs> Just give that to them, make them deal with it. I don't care how progressive you are in this audience, you're in a bookstore, whatever. Like, you hear suck my schlong, you're gonna take a step back. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Just feel that. Just feel that energy. We're gonna play another word associated here. Alright? Alright? Books. Goose. Penis again! Damn it! <laughs> Guys, I'm just so drunk off of this sparkling juice. I don't know what's in here, but it's kicking my ass. <laughs> It's not funny, there's electricity up here. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm terrible at relationships. Segway. Oh, that segue didn't get you? Alright, fine. Uh, I'm terrible at relationships, but, you know, who isn't? Like, uh, I don't play the... <laughs> Fuck off, Carlos. <laughs> I don't play the games in relationships the way I should. You know, like the Would You Still Love Me game. I'm terrible at that game. It usually goes like, Would you still love me if I only had one leg? No. Wait, I, I say spread your legs, I don't include a prosthesis in there. I'm sorry. It just doesn't work. I'm sorry, amputees in the audience. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend you. Whatever. Don't date this audience. <laughs> like, the, my last girlfriend got me with this one. It's, she was like, would you still love me if I was on a fire? Alright. Already sucks. My face burned off, and I was in a coma. I went with the truth. I told her, you wouldn't know. <laughs> I thought about it. The only thing worse that I could have said to her at that point was, I would love the person you used to be. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, you're in a coma too. Don't dig this audience number two. Uh, I'm going to end with this. I know it doesn't come off, but I'm not a manly man. <laughs> Fuck you guys for laughing. Uh, I'm not a manly man, so I tried to like bone up on some, bone up, on, I'm also five years old, uh, I tried to bone up on some, like, manly tips, so I got this magazine called The Backwoodsman. Not a gay porn magazine, sir. <laughs> I just realized. Um, it had articles in there, and it had, hey! 
I don't know what to say to you. It would be nice. All right. So, not manly. Uh, <laughs> so the article had an article about the article had an article. I'm hyped up to blame the juice. Uh, I read in there an article about Pat Lynch. For those of you who don't know, Pat Lynch, the most famous of the Rocky Mountain hermits. Mm -hmm. Ah, impressive. A hermit is someone who lives their life totally in seclusion away from society. Which raised the question in my mind, if Pat Lynch is the most famous of the Rocky Mountain Hermits, isn't he also the least successful of the Rocky Mountain Hermits? <laughs> Thank you guys, that is my time. Troy Coleman, everybody, I'm here. All right. Keep this show moving right along. Uh, the next comic coming to stage, he asked me to introduce himself as the future winner of Last Seahawk Standing. Uh, so please give it up to another winner, Mr. Tyler Wood, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't think I was going to come off as that much of an asshole. <laughs> oh well. Uh, funny thing is, uh, Lydia is going to be in that competition as well. So, uh, one by one, I'm slowly alienating the audience. Um, another friend of mine is, uh, I think, also going to try out for it. Um, Addison, but which is weird because he goes to Cape Fear. It's a UNCW competition. Uh, it's nothing against Cape Fear. It's just, it's not possible. Because he, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Let's see, let's see what I've got for you guys tonight. Slowly, slowly alienating the whole audience. I don't think I'll do as bad as Troy, though. I don't think I'm going to make fun of amputees. Um, it's not for me tonight. Uh, I used to be a chubby kid back in the day. I, but I lost, like, uh, well, I lost close to 70 pounds uh, to what I am now. Okay, thank you. It's just a little bit more. I deserve it. I deserve it. I didn't eat cake for like a whole week. It was, it was terrible. But uh, yeah, like if we're judging like how fat I used to be, like I've got like stretch marks still here and there. That was a nasty face. <laughs> stretch marks. <laughs> Don't have kids. Yeah, it's like I've got them in groups of threes now. I've got them all over the place. So um, I've got like three on my shoulder. So if I was in like the fat person army, I'd be a sergeant. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can see my penis now, which is kind of like a purple heart. Got <laughs> that face again. <laughs> um, but a thing that'll always happen, you know, if you're like a bigger guy, uh, or if you're if you're tall, people ask you, "Hey, you play you play basketball." And, you know, if you're a bigger guy, people ask you, do you play football? And that's not, that's not fair to assume things like that. You know, I don't go up to people and say, hey, you look like a lanky pedophile. How's the bully lean going, you know? <laughs> and I don't go up to, you know, uh, women who look like whores and say, you know, did you used to cheerlead? <laughs> I did that joke in Greenville one time. <laughs> And there was this girl in the front row that, like, scoffed at the joke when I said it. No one else saw her make the face that I did. So I said, what? Do you, you cheerlead? And I look like an asshole in Greenville. That's a tough one to pull off. Okay. Um, good news. Uh, I think I'm in love. Uh, yeah, she's a UNCW student. Um, I met her over the summer. Uh, she is, she's really, really nice European exchange student. She's so sweet. <laughs> what? No? No? Is it funnier if she's from Germany? <laughs> that holocaust me a lot. <laughs> I've brought worse girls home. <laughs> no? No? Okay, what if we go over to France? She's an Eiffel. <laughs> No, no, how about a trip to Spain? Her dad didn't like me, but her Madrid. <laughs> yes! Yes! Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. I, as I said, I go to UNCW, and uh, I had this class, this English class, and, you know, I've, I've been writing papers, uh, you know, like on the same subjects over and over for years. You know, it's just not a habit. And one of the things that I picked uh, was assisted suicide. And, you know, uh, it's just out of habit now. I've been writing it for years. I know all the different things. 
And people, you know, when they ask you, you know, what are you writing about? You say assisted suicide, they're like, you alright, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Need to talk to somebody? Is everything alright? So I decided this year I'm going to change it up a little bit. So I changed it to rape statistics in the U.S. <laughs> Teacher tried to tell me, you know, maybe you should change it, but I wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> I was writing that paper. <laughs> Good, if you like that rape joke, you're in for a treat. I have another one. <laughs> Uh, no, no face on that one. What's the deal? <laughs> Stretch marks. Like, uh, but <laughs> that'll, that'll do. Uh, so watching one of my favorite shows the other day, To Catch a Predator. Oh, God. Does anyone else like this show? It's hilarious. It's the best comedy on television. And um, there was this rabbi on there. They called a rabbi, a man of God. And he comes in, Chris Hansen comes in, they go through the whole thing, and gets into the questions, and he goes, Is it true that you sent pictures of your genitals to a 13-year-old boy via the mail? And the entire time I'm thinking, who still uses the mail to send genital pictures? <laughs> it's 2013, we have cell phones for that now. <laughs> what, was he using a Polaroid too? It's like, shake it out. <laughs> Younger crowd doesn't always get that one. Uh, I believe there's a song called Shake It Like a Polaroid Picture. Yeah. Apparently they, they used to have to shake that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, he, he'd he have to do that. And, you know, send it off. Wait like a week. It comes back. If it's not circumcised, he's a rabbi. He's got to go through the whole thing again. <laughs> got to find just the right one. Just the right one. Uh, you run into a lot of people on the UNCW campus. Uh, you run into Wills Maxwell. Yeah, woo! A better looking Wills Maxwell, too. <laughs> run into both of them. And uh, I ran into a young lady on campus the other day, and uh, she had tattoos across her chest. And, you know, I just I thought about it for a while. Her cleavage. <laughs> and I thought. You know, she got tattoos on her chest. If she has tip tats and she eats tip tacks, does she have good breath but bad taste? <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll leave you guys on this one. Uh, I don't think it's fair to call women who sleep with a lot of men sluts or whores. I think you should. <laughs> bad timing, though. <laughs> Bad timing. <laughs> Believe you should call them what they actually are. Uh, Good Samaritans. <laughs> I don't think you should call men who sleep with a lot of women pimps or players or anything like that. You should call them what they actually are. Tyler Wood. <laughs> so if there are any Good Samaritans in the audience, I'd like to let you know I'm Tyler Wood. Thank you, everybody. Good night. coming to stage. Very, very funny lady and a winner. Give it up for Miss Bridget Callahan, everybody! Hi, guys! I don't know what, I didn't win anything, but I am going to win Last Seahawk Standing, just so you guys know. Because I am actually a UNCW student, so I can. Um, what a, whoa, that's a lot of echo. Okay, Bridget, can you guys hear me in the back? <laughs> One of the things that I like most about doing comedy is that when you get up on stage, it just it's one of those moments where you can put your whole life in very stark relief, right? And think about where you are. Like two months ago, I found myself standing on a stage in a gay bar at midnight doing a show. The gay bar was called The Toolbox. It was across from the docks. And I was wearing a sequin dress that I already owned prior to booking this gig. And I thought, am I happy with what this says about my life? And the answer is yes, totally. And I'm having one of those moments, right? Because now I'm standing in a bookstore in a tiny college coastal town. Um, and I own two cars all of a sudden, which I didn't mean to have happen. I bought my friend's car yesterday and I still have my other car. And they're both hoopties. They're terrible cars. 
but this is the probably the only time in my life where I'll own two cars at once ever. So I sort of feel really good about this moment. So give it up for yourself right now. You're giving me like a pretty good sense of well-being. Um, my first job was actually at a bookstore in high school. I worked at a double day, and I, it was in a mall that was on the way to the airport. So we had celebrities stop by. I grew up in Cleveland, so we had like B-list celebrities come by all the time, right? And I was 16, and I was working on like a Friday night, and Drew Carey came into the store. Uh, I think it was during the Drew Carey show while it was on. Because I remember I knew who he was, and I don't think there's any reason to know who he is except for that show. And I hate that show. I hated that show when I was 16, too. It was terrible. Um, but... Jesus, that echo. But, but. Right. <laughs> um, so he yelled at me. He made me cry at work. I know. Because we didn't have the new John Grisham book. Which I was very condescending about. And years later, when I was working customer service for this insurance company, I had the only customer who's ever really yelled at me. Because uh, I sound like a 12-year-old girl on the phone. So when you call me, you don't want to yell at me. But this guy screamed at me, and he called me a bad puppy dog. <laughs> For like 10 minutes, he was like, why are you being such a bad puppy dog? Don't you want to be a good dog? What's wrong with you, bad puppy dog? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and at that moment, I realized that that is actually, even though Drew Carey didn't say it, that is what he had been thinking to me when I was 16, <laughs> standing in the bookstore, yelling to me about John Grisham, was that I was a bad puppy dog. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's pretty much like my most vivid bookstore memory ever. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about. Um, I, I'm a writer, and I wanted to be a writer when I was a child, too. And my parents were very supportive of this, but they didn't want to be too supportive. Because they believed, rightly so, that you could be like a doctor and a lawyer or something, and also be a writer. So they kept trying to encourage me to do other things besides writing, like in, on top of writing. So they sent me to like every camp they could think of that didn't have to do with writing. So I went to space camp. <laughs> I went to archaeology camp. I went to computer camp, which is the least fun camp you could possibly be sent to when you're 10. And I had to go with this really dorky guy from my school uh, named Robert, who was like two, two grades above, like he had passed up because he was some sort of genius. So he's younger than me, and he was like a foot shorter than me. And we took this music editing class together, which meant every day for two hours I had to listen to him trying to record his version of Piano Man over and over and over again. Um, we also took a class where they taught you to uh, make this computer program to choose your own adventure video game, right? It was like really simple coding. And I got kind of obsessed with the idea of choose your own adventures, and I really want to write an adult novel that's a choose-your-own-adventure book. I think that would be really cool. Only I think it would also be incredibly tragic and boring. Because if you're talking about real choose-your-life adventure, right? Like, it would be option A, buy these two PBRs, versus option two, buy a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese to eat the next day. <laughs> or do I go to the gas pump and try to float this $1 charge so I can fill up my gas tank? If I do that, my Netflix account will cancel. What do I do? <laughs> I actually, I think, um, I think I decided I wanted to be a writer because I was such a liar. I was a horrible liar. Like, and I just lied my ass off. And I remember reading A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, and she talks about, her teacher tells her that she should stop lying, and she should just be a writer, and that like, stuck in my head. Because books lie to you constantly. Like, they are the one vehicle where they will lie their ass off to you, and you don't mind, and you'll believe it all. Things that books have taught me that are not true. Smart people are not pretty, and pretty people aren't smart. That's a lesson we learn. Children whose parents are dead are better people than other people. <laughs> Redheads are attractive. And uh, bonding with large predators is fun and easy and doesn't ever lead to mauling. You can be friends with that tiger, it's totally fine. Um, besides writing, I, I, I've been here for a year, and I've tried to get a lot done while I'm here, but I'm sort of enjoying just being in the South and how fucking weird this is, because I'm a Yankee. Uh, my favorite place, it turns out, is Carolina Beach. I think it's the best place in this entire town. I mean, in addition to Brits Donuts, right, which are okay, they're awesome. 
They're great. I like them. They're just donuts. What's great about Carolina Beach is that you have a fucking festival like carousel always there. And it's the most depressing carousel festival I've ever been to in my entire life. And nobody's happy being there. And they're all just, we want to get food and we want to leave. It's like this weird, neon, filled, beautiful, apocalyptic wasteland. It's gorgeous. There are two things that it's okay to do really well in Carolina Beach, which is A, film an amateur porn. <laughs> or be, be homeless. <laughs> it's a perfect place to be homeless. Um, do you guys are you, are you guys all familiar with Carolina Beach, or are you all mostly downtown people? Carolina Beach. All right. So you know that road, Old Dow Road, that goes behind Carolina Beach, and you take that to get to Curry Beach, right? So the cops don't pull you over. <laughs> it's, it's the where you smoke your joint on the way to Curry Beach. Um, turns out that. One of the largest munition dumps in the country is behind Curry Beach. It's called Sunny Point. So it's where the government like disposes all their old rockets and bombs and shit, right? So all that forest area uh, on Old Dow Road is actually the buffer zone. Nobody's allowed to build there because it's in the blast radius if somebody were to attack the munitions dump. And even better, I heard that there is a tribe of feral homeless people that live in the buffer zone. <laughs> And I believe it, because I've read the Craigslist Misconnections for Carolina Beach. <laughs> and if there was any place that's harboring feral homeless people, that is it. Um, I want to read you guys an ad from there. Do you guys want to hear it? Yeah. Let me get this up here. This is amazing. I can't, even, I can't even actually convey all the spelling mistakes, so I just want you to use your imagination. The title is, Come Breastfeed Me. <laughs> It's a man looking for two women. He's originally from Leland. And the ad reads, single white male, I love to be, just the letter B, be breastfeed, very good at sucking nipples and draining the milk from your tits. I live alone. Put milk me in the subject if you're real. That guy is not real. If you meet that guy, he will be a feral cannibal. And he will come to your fucking beachfront condo and eat you. Alright, that's my time, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bridget Callahan, everybody. Very, very nice. Alright. How are you guys doing right now? How are you feeling? Alright, cool. Our uh, next comic coming to the stage, he was a finalist at uh, the Lazy Pirate Comedy Competition. He's been a finalist at the Port City's Top Comic Comedy Competition. He's been in the Cape Fear Comedy Festival. So he's got, uh, he, he, he might not have won those competitions, but he'll win your heart. So, <laughs> so give it up for the very huggable Lou Morganti, everybody. <laughs> Uh, let me introduce the guy that's won nothing, ever. <laughs> Including everything in Little League, kids soccer. Yeah, even to keep scoring, I still was a loser in Little like soccer. Like, I got in trouble in when I was a kid playing kids soccer because I was going the wrong way with the ball. I was, I was four years old. And I remember I came home and I'm like... Mom, I don't want to play soccer anymore because the coach yelled at me for going the wrong way. And she, like, literally withdrew me from, like, from kid soccer. Like, and that just shows you, like, my entire life why I've gone wrong. Because I'm just going, Mommy, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad that this stage is made out of concrete. It is the only stage I'm confident I can stand on without falling through. <laughs> I'm a little upset that Bridget did read my Craigslist ad. <laughs> I like milk. <laughs> yeah. This actually happened to me the other day. I, uh, I went through a fast food drive-thru. Surprise! <laughs> and I ordered to the little box like you do. And I made my little order and I drove around. And the man opened the window and went, Wow, you sound a lot nicer than you look. <laughs> and 
and I had no response to that man. The Burger King man made me feel bad. He worked at Burger King, made me feel bad. So you know where I am in life. <laughs> Everyone's like, I, you're just sad. This is an AA meeting, sir. This is a comedy show. We came to laugh, sir. This microphone is echoey or I'm really loud. I, I probably don't even need the microphone. I'm probably just as loud this way. <laughs> Big fat idiot, that's what I am. I, uh, <laughs> somebody just, oh. Oh. There's 34 years of hate built up in here. Oh, stop it, stop it. Stop feeling bad for me. You're enabling it. The more awes I get, I'm like, I can get away with it. <laughs> I've been thinking about smoking crack. <laughs> I think about smoking crack for two important reasons. Uh, the first reason is, you never see a fat crackhead. <laughs> Second reason, you never see a single crackhead. They always have that crackhead girlfriend with them all the time. <laughs> So in my mind, I can kill two birds with one rock. <laughs> I gotta give that one a minute because somebody's gotta turn to someone, crack rock, that's what he means, it's a crack rock. There's always somebody